Hello, this is Overlord Bo, and we're back with another ship review video. And today, we'll be looking at the new Premium Tier 9 Pan Asian light cruiser, the Dalian. Now, this ship will be going on sale uh, February 3rd or 4th, depending upon the server you're on, for 19,300 doubloons. And I would recommend the Dalian only if you do not have a Smolensk. And we'll go over why. First, let's look over the armor and the build. So for the armor here, it has 16 millimeters armors on the bow, uh, 16 here, 16 here, with a citadel th uh, thickness of 100 millimeters. And just like the line um, for the Pan Asian CLs, it does have um, above water citadels, so you definitely have to watch out for that as well. Now for the build. Uh, for the build of this ship, you want to go maximum DACA. So you want to do main armament, uh, damage con, aiming, propulsion, concealment, and range. Uh, with the build here, you want to do incoming fire alert, uh, demolition expert, uh, heavy HE and sap, adrenaline rush, uh, consumable enhancement, survivability expert, superintendent, and concealment. Now with the build out of the way... Uh, we're going to start just going over the ship stats. So while that's going on, uh, we're, I'll let you guys watch a replay. So, give me one second for that. All right. So, the Dalian has an armor, well, has a base HP of 27,400 HP with a 16 millimeter bow and stern. It also has a 16 millimeter deck with a 100 millimeter belt. Uh, the ship it has a 4% torpedo protection system. Uh, Citadel placement is above, as high above the water as I shown earlier. Now the Dalian's armor can optimistically be described as inadequate. While BBs will often overpen her paper thin armor, this same lack of armor also makes Dalian, uh, Dalian vulnerable to even DDHE shells. Supercruisers and even some heavy cruisers with 229 millimeter or larger guns can overmatch her hull, making angling practically impossible. Worse yet, her citadel is easy to hit as it sits high above the waterline. It does have an extremely low HP pool, high citadel, and poor armor, which means that the Dalian is the easiest ship to kill at tier 9. She is heavily reliant on her maneuverability and smoke to survive engagements. Now let's move on to the main guns. The main guns are 5 twin 130mm 60-60 uh, guns. They have a 5.5 second reload with 13.5 kilometer range. If you do build into the guns, uh, the gun range, it does go to 15.7. Now, it does have a Sigma of 2.05, which is pretty normal, with an HE Alpha of 1800. It does have a 196K uh, HE DPM, which is pretty good, with a 22 millimeter HE pen and 8% fire chance. Now, the AP does 2600 Alpha, with 284k AP DPM, with 9mm overmatch, 45 through 60 ricochet angles, which is pretty normal. Now, I can fire all turrets 32 degrees to the rear and 30 off the bow, and it does have the same shell ballistics as the Grozovoy. Now, the Dalian has, a Dalian has respectable firepower thanks to her Grozovoy guns. Her shell ballistics are surprisingly good, uh, being uh, similar to the IGN cruisers uh, and the Drake and Goliath. Though her firepower looks good on paper, the poor HE pin significantly reduces their effectiveness against more heavily armored targets. Meaning the Dalian relies more on fires to, d to deal damage. But don't discount her AP shells though. They, they won't Citadel cruisers past 7 kilometers, but they can rack up considerable penetration damage on broadside targets. Now the Dalian's main issue is her lack of range, maxing out a 17, sorry, 15.7 kilometers. Even with all upgrades, uh, Captain should make full use of her smoke and concealment to position close enough to farm her enemies. Overall, her guns are above average in terms of damage output. Uh, while Dalian lacks the damage output of other CLs, uh, access to smoke more than offsets her trade-off in firepower. Now let's talk about her torpedoes. She comes with four triple 533mm torpedoes with a 10km range. 
Now, these torpedoes um, do 15,100 damage per, per hit, uh, 90, 90 second reload, and they go 60 knots uh, speed. Now, the detection of these torps are 1.2 kilometer detection with a 7.7, 7, uh, pretty much a 7.7 7 second reaction time when, when they're spotted. And they also do have a 250% flooding chance, which is relatively mediocre. Now, unlike the cruiser line for the Panasians, this these torpedoes are normal torpedoes and not deep water. So, so let's go over that for a second. Now, the Dalian torpedoes, they're surprisingly useful for a cruiser. With a maximum concealment build, she has a useful 1.1 kilometer stealth torpedo buffer. Her torpedoes are especially useful in the kiting role as she can light fires on ships who repair her floods. The 90 second reload in good torpedo angles allow her to constantly throw out torpedoes to anything that chases her down. Any ship who rushes her smoke must also be wary of counter rushes with torpedoes. Six tor torps will reliably kill all but full health BBs. And if Dalion survives the first pass, she can launch torps from the other side to guarantee the kill. Now let's talk about the anti-air defense. Now, the anti-air defense for the Dalian has six inner and plus one outer for the flak. Uh, the far DPM for this, of, this, of the anti-air is 168, the mid is 119, and the close is 172. Unfortunately, the Dalian, Dalian's uh, AA is not as effective as her tech tree cousin. Although her long-range AA is good, she lacks the effective mid and short-range DPM to stop attacks. The lack of DF DFAA in low HP pool also doesn't help her, her vulnerability to CV strikes. Instead, Dalian's best defense against air attacks are is her maneuverability in more dire scenarios, uh, her smoke. Now let's talk about her maneuverability. Um, the ship base speed is 33.4 uh, kilometers or knots. Sorry, it's, th it's 33.4 knots. Uh, with a 660 meter turning radius. It does also have a rudder shift time of 6.9 seconds. Now, while her speed is average for the tier, uh, Dalian's has an exceptionally tight turning radius and responsive rudder shift time. In fact, her turning radius is better than many DDs she faces. She will need all the maneuvers she can to survive outside of her smoke. Let's talk about her consumables. Um, the she has a standard cruiser DCP of five second mini period with a 60 second reload. Also has a standard par repair party which heals up to 14% over 28 seconds or 16.8% if you have signals. Now the ship also, and then these have an 80 second reload. Now if you don't have su superintendent you only get four charges, but with superintendent you get five charges. Now, the sh now she does get a pan Asian smoke generator which lays smoke down for 30 seconds. Um, with a duration of 70 seconds with a reload of 110 seconds now if you do build in the smoke like I have um, you do get a 37.9 second uh, lane time instead of the 30 which is a pretty nice increase and you get five of these uh, smokes if you do have superintendent now so let's look over the overall my overall impressions of the ship it does have an average skill floor and an average skill ceiling its playstyle is pretty similar to a Smolensk or a Flint. It's a smoke farming cruiser, um, very similar to those two cruisers I just mentioned. Now, she's best described as the tier 9 Pan Asian version of a Smolensk or Flint. Her playstyle revolves around her getting within 9 to 12 kilometers of her of her enemies before smoking up, um, up to farm them. Her 10 Grozovoy guns and stealth torpedoes allows her... Um, it gives her respectable firepower, while her smoke screen and good concealment helps her survive return fire. Uh, Dalian's uh, PA style smoke is very flexible when compared to other cruisers. Though they are shorter, the Pan Asian smokes usually last long enough for most engagements, while their short cooldowns let her reposition more aggressively. Now her now she excels at farming damage, especially against aggressive pushes as her torps and guns can quickly rack up considerable damage. Now in this match, I had to kind of chase people down, so I wasn't able to effectively farm down the targets that I really wanted to. 
But at the same time, it kind of showcases the rougher end of the spectrum. Now, if I was in a match where I was in, say, tier 8s or 7s or, other, or just playing 9s, I would, and if they were being more aggressive, I'd be able to farm a lot more than would be in this match. And in the end, I still did pretty decent, even though I was in a higher tier match. Um, so I did pretty decent for what the ship is capable of. And again, you don't want to be afraid to spam the smoke. You do have five smokes, which means you can afford to use a few defensively without severely compromising your offens off offensive ca uh, capabilities. Now, outside of smoke, uh, she is much more vulnerable due to her poorly armored citadels I showed earlier. DBs may either overpin or cause citadel damage, depending on the range. And if uh, Dalian is angling too much, cruiser AP is likely to citadel. Thank you. So it's recommended to always angle to them. Now, lack of hydro also makes her vulnerable to torpedo attacks. One torpedo hit will easily remove over half of her HP. Thankfully, she can dodge most enemy attacks due to her exceptional maneuverability, at least long enough for her smoke to come back up. Now, be wary of the Russian 12-kilometer radars, as they can negate her smoke advantage and punish uh, your broadside. Now, finally, avoid pushing into enemies as her awful HP pool will not la last long on the attacks. Pushing into anything bigger than a DD is likely to end in a big a trip back to port. Except opponents, um, expect opponents to focus you whenever you get, whenever they get a shot on you, because you're so squishy. They just see you as a TC morsel just to get some free damage. Now, overall, the Dalian is above average, though somewhat volatile in her performance. She does well if she can farm safely from her smoke screen, but if forced out, then she becomes extremely vulnerable. Successful players will support the, their DDs and the teams, allowing them to spot for her and return to letting her farm her opponents. Now, for randoms, I would say the ship is above average or good at farming damage, but vulnerable to exploding. In ranked, it's mediocre, uh, heavily reliant on spotting and no utility. Now, for CBs, as a likely niche, will fill a similar role to Smolensk as a DPM DD support ship. Now, while this thing goes on, I'll talk about why I would recommend this ship. Now, whenever I was playing this ship, the shell arcs are a lot better than the Pan Asian Tech Tree line that's currently that's currently just came out. It feels a lot easier to farm damage compared to those lines. Like the guns actually feel like the shell velocity, like the arcs are a lot better. So it's easier for you to be able to farm damage over longer distances. And that's something that the Pan Asian line currently really misses. While this kind of lets you get that. The other thing is you also do get regular torpedoes. So instead of having deep water, you have regular torpedoes and you can still push these out almost as much as the attack tree lines. Now, I would say this ship is pretty much like a tier 9 mini Smolensk. I wouldn't say it's it's definitely not as good as the Smolensk. So, if you have a Smolensk, I wouldn't recommend this ship. But, in the end, I would say it's pretty much like a mini Smolensk. And that's why I would kind of, rec I would recommend it only for randoms and maybe some ranked. But it would definitely be niche for clan battles. Now again, for a, having a price of 19300 that is a lot. So I would only recommend the ship if you do not have a Smolensk. And also... Yes, if you, do, if you do not have a Smolensk, I would recommend getting this ship. Because out of the tier 9 cruisers you can currently buy or get available for coal or steel, this is pretty much the only one that you can currently get that fills kind of like that farmer and smoke roll effectively out of the premiums you can currently get. Now, if there are any other ships I would, um, that do fill this role, I would appreciate someone fill me in on this. But as of right now, I believe they took out every single one the only similar ship that kind of fills in this kind of role is the Gronigan. um but that's a dd and it's also tier 9 so but yeah it's it's a dd and not a cruiser so but it kind of has a similar role like with farming and a smoke kind of thing but it's it's a dd so it's kind of like a whole another different class so pretty much um the rest of this match we're kind of just chasing this dude down so we're not gonna watch that we're just gonna go back to so the final score, I did 83,000 damage with one kill. 
again, it wasn't the best match, but it just showed the worst case scenario in a way where if you're if you, you don't have a lot of people pushing you, you have to kind of run people down. It's kind of what's going to happen. But in a match where people are pushing you, or you are definitely going to be able to farm a lot more damage. Um, on the team, I did get about middle, which is kind of expected, 1,594, uh, 1594 um, XP, which is kind of expected for what I did in the match. Now, again, I would recommend this ship only if you don't have a Smolensk. If you do have one, there really isn't a need unless you're trying to do future tier 9 Ranked, ranked nine matches with her maybe in ranked or a future brawl maybe but i don't I, I couldn't really see this ship doing well too well in brawls uh due to like its armor but yeah um if you guys have any questions or concerns i definitely appreciate you guys leaving down in the comments down below again the ship will be going out on february 3rd or 4th depending upon the server you're on for 19,300 doubloons but yep that's it for the day thank you all for watching uh, sorry again if I for mispronouncing the ship. I do have a speech disorder, so I do apologize for that. But thank y'all for watching, and I'll talk to y'all later. Oh, big stretch, dude. Oh, big stretch, yeah.